Alright guys, we have slid the grizzly in that direction. It's still usable. Man, I got something in my damn shoe. Yep. Wow. I can't seem to get out. There it is. Anyway, uh, now we're ready to, uh, I'm not going to do the chip pan, uh, simply because it's just going to get messed up and it'll be scratched all the pieces. Uh, so I, I'm not really going to do the chip pan, but I am going to uh, paint the legs. <laughs> Duh. So, we're going to go ahead and put this together, and the reason I decided to go ahead and move the Grizzly is because I really didn't want to put this uh, lathe together twice. Uh, that was going to have to be tore down anyway, so we're just going to... My shop is a mess right now. I mean, everything everywhere. So, I'm glad I'm getting my bench back the way it was when I had the Atlas. Uh, I liked it better the way it was set up. There ain't nothing wrong with the Grizzly. Uh, it's just got less features than I want. So, that's why I went, went this route. Well, that ain't my 9 16th. I like to know where my 9 16th went. I'll probably regret not doing the chip pan, but the paint that I'm using, it would be destroyed in no time. So, I think it's just best to leave it the way it is. scratching the paint. Alright. Now let's move this into location here. I went and made me another bushing. So there's my mate. That's the one I made. And 
and this is the original and I put oilers on them that's just like the ones I did for the Grizzly all right and then this goes up there like that like that thank God I made it because the guy said he didn't have one have it Alright guys, um, we're ready to mount this down and what I've done is I've cut me some rubber pieces and I'm going to put underneath there because I might want to use flood cooling on this and this pan's deep enough that I can do that. So uh, I cut four of these and then I've got this piece that came off of a handle on a treadmill that's rubber that will go underneath that piece right there of course I'll cut that to fit the bottom of the uh, the bracket but um, yeah this is this is going to work pretty good so uh, right now I've already drilled the holes and uh, we're ready to bolt this thing down so I want to take and just raise that up just far enough that I can get those underneath there. Let's see if I can find a better way to raise that. I just want to raise it far enough to well need the board or something oh well I guess I'm gonna have to do it this way but I know I'm gonna knock it off of the holes right there's one yeah, it a little bit further So if I'm a screwdriver, and then we'll slide that rubber piece over, just like that. And I'm using these washers that for toilets, believe it or not, and they work just perfect. So that'll make it look nicer. And I'm using these lag bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one down so that it don't move. As soon as I find my ratchet, which is never where you want it, here it is. Alright, so now we've got this mounted down. It ain't going nowhere. So now we need to drill holes here. And those are going to be these big old long lag bolts. And I can only find two shiny ones and two rusty ones. Yeah, and they're a little long. But that's alright. Um. Uh, Gotta do some wire wheel onto these. But we put all four of these in here because we definitely want this to be mounted down really good. It's going into a tube of six, so it's gonna be nice and tight. So now I'll find me a drill bit and find out what size drill bit I need. And let's mount that. That'll go right there. 
Um, so before I do this, I'm gonna have to put the uh, thing on it. So let me get my stuff together here, and we'll be back. All right, guys, we got this ready to go on, and this thing's beating my ass. I can tell you that. All right, so now we need to get our rubber in there. It was formed like that for a long time, so it's um, kind of hard to work with here. I'm gonna slide it underneath there somehow. Had to shorten them bolts. I hope they'll work. Probably need a shallow well. get it started. Alright, that one's started. So now let's get the next one started. The good part about this is the chip pan was already marked for it. So there's no way we're getting it in the wrong place so <laughs> that worked out pretty good and the last one so now this thing the chip pan is sealed So now, if I want to run fluid in it, I can. I probably never will, but the option's there if I need it. Alright, let's see if we can move this out of the way and get a longer ratchet as soon as I can find it. <laughs> I can't find my big long one. Alright, this will work. Alright, now we get the cracker down. And we don't need the hole now. I only needed that hole for the atlas because it went down in farther. Alright, there's that. That is mounted. Now, let's go ahead and put this on there. Get my wrench.
and we're just we're just going to try to put it right in the middle split the difference and then we'll adjust it once we get everything right alright that's ready now we got to put our actually we need to put some felt in between those um, I guess it really wouldn't be necessary but we'll adjust all that once we get the head on it and ready to go so now we get to put all the rest of the parts on it get my masking tape off all right so So now we got the counter shaft installed. Now we got to put our motor on. So we have decided to use this motor simply because it's smaller. So we're going to cover our ways so we can set things on it. Get plenty of padding on this bad boy. All right, make a nice bench, <laughs> sturdy one at that. All right, so now I'll take this motor and see if it'll work. I believe she'll work. I believe that'll work really good. Now I just gotta find me some bolts. Uh, I probably, man, I'm gonna tell you, this thing's tearing my back up, man. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling this disc trying to slip on me, man. I don't need that, not right now. Um, Yeah, if I fart wrong, I, my back will pull out on me, man. Anyway, um, I need to take the uh, cord out of the other motor and I wonder, I really don't feel like cleaning that bad boy up right now. Uh, I'd rather it just be a spare motor because this motor runs really good and um, there's only one problem I see with this motor and the fact that the back of it is open um, okay, the back of this one is sealed so I may end up putting that motor back on it uh, I just uh, I need to move the cord from going in the side to going in the back. Uh, it's got a plate on the back of it that I can put a wire clamp in it and put my wire through it and make that work. Uh, so I got the, uh, the grizzly over there temporarily sitting there and I'm going to tell you uh, that's a lathe that you definitely need to have bolted down. Show you why. That thing wobbles. <laughs> so, um, 
that'll give me a chance to clean that up and get it nice and pretty and ready to go. Uh, I'll have this done by next week. Uh, next Friday, if not sooner, I, I, I wouldn't even be afraid to say that I'll have this thing running come Wednesday night. Uh, we're hoping I'll be cutting chips. So, until we figure out what we're going to do next, uh, we'll pause this. Well, guys, um, I'm having problems with videos again. Um, I don't know what's going on, but. Windows Movie Maker has got me pissed off. Uh, hit film's not working for some reason. Every time I try to use hit film, it uh, locks my computer up. So now I'm in the process of reinstalling Windows on my computer. Uh, something has gotten corrupted. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm out here trying to finish a video up so I had to re-record some stuff uh, we left off at the motor uh, I'll try to explain to you what we've got going on here uh, this pulley right here uh, this is the one that came with it it's for flat belts the pulley that was on the original motor I'll show you and we're going to have to use this motor. I've done painted it. And uh, cleaned it up. Because I really didn't want to mess with the wiring. Uh, because of the, uh, uh, the switch right here. That's all that's in that switch. Six contacts. <laughs> so we're... we're Cleaning it up, making it look pretty. And here is the uh, the top of it, the handle. And one of the screws was missing, so I had this box of screws here, brass bib screws. <laughs> and uh, I took and cleaned the cylinder off a little bit with wire wheel so it would make good contact but back to the pulley uh, this here is the pulley that was on the motor the one that's sitting on the vise that I'm going to end up using which was the one that came off of it and this is a v-belt well they had these two married together there's no way this thing hasn't run. Uh, they didn't run it like that. Because that, there's no way you could put a V-belt on this without it coming off. So, instead of using that, I found one off of my air compressor that I had a while back. And it had the right size shaft, 5 8 shaft. And uh, it's running true. So... I think that's what we're going to use. Uh, I would like to have the original shaft or pulley like this that's a V pulley that takes two different sizes. But I usually set mine and leave it the way it is. Uh, I don't mess with my settings. Once I've got it locked down to a, a happy speed, it stays there. I have never move the speed on my Grizzly. I don't have a purpose for changing my pulleys uh, or my change gears. And, um, you know, everybody says, well, well, you're not going to want that lathe because it's, uh, don't have a quick change gearbox. I don't need one. So, I don't understand why I'm being, why people are trying to force me to to have a uh, change gear when I don't want it. I don't need it. 
you know, I'm not that kind of shop that that, that little bit of, uh, of a problem can't be accepted. Uh, I can accept that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to accept the fact that I don't have a, a quick change gearbox. I got a quick change tool, tool post. That's all I need is quick. <laughs> uh, you know, I want to learn this lathe without the quick change. Uh, once I learn it, never know what might come in my future. I don't know. But, uh, we've got that mounted and everything. All that's good. Uh, got my lever hooked up and uh, I have to do a bunch of adjustments and these here are levels and I've already put oil in them so yeah that's going to work fine now this here is not tight yet uh, I haven't tightened it down yet until I figure out where the head's going to be so that I have these lined up correct uh, so we are going to use this motor, which is also a half horse horsepower, both of them are half horsepower, and um, yes, that's a god awful big motor for a half horsepower. But the problem that that I had with it is this base is really long, and um, it doesn't fit the pad. I hope I don't have to cut that pad down uh, on the motor because as you see, you see how little this pad is? This would be the ideal motor to use uh, simply because it fits this pad and I can put all four bolts in it. Well. The other one, I can only put these two bolts in it. So I don't know. We definitely know that that motor is not the original motor that came with this. Uh, but it's a working motor. It's a quiet motor. So I don't see... I don't see where that this motor is going to be a problem except for room. Um, I may have to take this cord and move it over here, drill a hole in the plate, and put my clamp in the back side so that this is not up against the wall because this will be up against the wall. Uh, we may have enough room. I don't know yet. Uh, so, you know, I think this is where we're going to stop. Now, I used black hammered on this, and that thing looks pretty good. So, we'll put that on there, and this goes on the top with brass screws. That'll look tough. I I'm actually surprised I had them screws. So, this is going to end part three of the Logan lathe restore and I hope this helps you guys out if maybe you guys haven't seen one of them go together uh, you can see how it goes together in fact let me do a pan around here so See how close that is to the wall back there? That's the only thing that's bothering me. Uh, of course, it ain't setting clear up on the pedestal. But this here's the linkage, how it all goes together. And I've got oil in my dripper. And I don't think there's any place on the headstock that needs a um, oiler, but we'll find out. 
but I think this pulley will work. We hope it's balanced because it was with a uh, air compressor, so I don't see a reason why it shouldn't work. You know, I've got all these different settings down here. Now I can use three of these pulleys. I'm not going to be able to use all of them because I got enough room here on this shaft that I can slide that in to use. Right now I've got it set for this one, and I can move it in to use this one and I can move it out to use this one. So I've got three different uh, locations here that I can use. And uh, now I've just got to find some belt. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping that uh, Crafted has some laying around. Uh, that's half inch, I do believe. Let me measure that real quick. You know what? I can have 50 tape measures out here and still never find one. There we go. Yep, half inch belt. Um, so that's the only thing I need to do with the um, uh, pulley is to get a belt for it and um, then we got to put the motor on it and then it's the uh, tail stock and the head stock and lead screw and all that good stuff that's going to be the most increment uh, or how would I say it? That's going to be the most tedious part. So, uh, anyway, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. You guys have a good one. Later.